I was an avid mythology reader for the first couple of decades of my life. And if there is one thing I found interesting amongst all of them was the concept of immortality. Be it a character like Ashwatthama, Tithonus, or the concept of living forever as a soul just sounded out of the world. However, as I stand here today, my zeal to live longer and forever if possible is much more real, physical, and scientific. We learn from mythologies and we create the very fabric of reality with science. A few decades ago, researchers started understanding the process of aging. Their results today guide us towards a technological revolution that can radically increase human lifespan and health span. Supported by institutions like University of Harvard, Oxford University, Sense Organization, and investors like Jeff Bezos and Vitalik Buterin, these ideas are on a rapid journey towards solidification. One of the key focus is to reverse age. Reversing age, that might sound absolutely absurd. But let me ask you something. With a show of hands, can you please tell me how many of you think that aging is an entirely natural process? Well, that's a lot of hands. Well, if aging was an entirely natural process, wouldn't it have been consistent in every person? Why is your friend showing signs of aging faster or slower than you are? Why are people with bad, bad lifestyle naturally aging faster compared to people with good lifestyle? If aging indeed was programmed in your biology, wouldn't it have been consistent throughout the population? That is not certainly something we see around us. What does it mean? It means that almost 70% of your aging process is guided by your lifestyle, while only 30% of it really depends on the genetics. Therefore, reversing age becomes now possible. And if age is reversed, we'll be saving a lot of lives. And why do you think so? Because age and age-related diseases claim more than 50% of the total deaths in the world. Now, if we look at this graph here, we see that we have had a jump of average lifespan from almost 40s in 1950s to 70s in 2019. Why do you think this jump came about? Because the scientific advancement was able to deal with all the infant mortality related diseases. The next most common occurrence of diseases are in the elders. And you're not born with these diseases. You just live enough to gather them in your body. You gather them because the process of aging severely impairs your optimal biology. However, to stop the inevitable decline that aging brings to you, we must first understand what it does and how it does it. So, the process of aging has a few weapons. And it uses these weapons to target your DNA, stem cells, metabolism, energy system, and even your tissues. Basically, aging is a murderer that plots for his own demise. One of the most common targets of the aging process is your genome. The genome is made up of DNA and it codes day and night for every function that's happening in your body. But genome is sensitive and it is constantly bullied by bad guys like radiation, toxins and even your own metabolic byproducts. Although evolution equips us with genome and DNA repair systems, it yearns for help as we age. Consider this scenario to understand this better. We have a valley station. On day one, we have three valleys, which are efficiently able to divide the cars amongst them. That's why, and they often also get free time for it. But on day two, one of the valleys gets called in for some other job. Now, there are only two of them, number of cars have increased, the workload have increased, and they're getting very, very tired. On day three, one more valley decides to quit. Now, it's a complete chaos. The cars are piling up, and there is no one to tend to them, the customers are getting angry, and some of them are even leaving. 
a similar dynamic goes on in your body. The valley stations are your DNA repair systems. The cars are the damaged portions of your DNA. And the drivers are your vitamin B derivatives called NAD. Now, NAD is such a multifunctional molecule, it's used up by almost 500 different processes in your body. As we age, the NAD levels in your body falls down. And now, the DNA repair system just does not have enough raw material to do, deal with the damage in your DNA. This is the major cause for genomic instability. While genome is the target for the damage, the someone is generating all this damage. These are your senescent or zombie cells. Basically, every cell in your body can divide up to a certain number of times, after which it goes into a cell cycle arrest. Putting it simply, these guys cannot divide anymore. But they are not entirely dead too. They become zombies. And what zombies do? They attack the cells, healthy cells around them. To understand this better, let us take another scenario. Let us consider that one of you, that someone in your place is having a funeral. On the other hand, someone is going through a terminal disease and treatment for it. While the funeral that is the former sounds like loss and grief, it is much more peaceful. While in the latter, the entire household is stressed, many more people fall sick in the entire process. This is the same dynamic of your senescent cells. These dying cells are more of a threat to the cells around them than the dead cells themselves. Another major hallmark of aging is the explosions in the powerhouses of your cell. Do you remember these powerhouses? The mitochondria. These mitochondria in your cells are producing energy day and night. And if there is one thing we know about powerhouses, it's that they are prone to blasts and damage. It is expected that as we age, the mitochondria in your cells are exposed to a lot of toxins. These toxins mutate them. The mutated mitochondria makes more toxins. <laughs> it's like a chain reaction of many explosions. Well, these are only few of the nine hallmarks of aging. But before you expect this to become a science lecture, let's just digress from the core science. The bottom line is, aging is a complex process. And we might not have fully understood it yet. But we are definitely making longer strides into this field. And the results that lead us to a potentially extended lifespan are exponentially and optimistically growing. Animal models that often pave way for human research have given us excellent results. Just by using NAD boosters and gene editing technique, we were able to increase the lifespan in mice. Even in human clinical trials, we have been able to restore the muscle function, the aerobic endurance, and even able to reverse some effects of the aging process. The two things I am most interested in, in the future are the first one being an artificial mitochondria. This can be used to replace the mutated mitochondria in your cell and eventually revive the energy systems. The second is one you would seldom believe, a vaccine for aging. Imagine a vaccine which deals with the damage right at the moment it is created in your body and does not allow it to grow. Well, this is being worked upon and might become a reality sometime in the future. These and many other scientific advancement if I start listing them all down right now, I'd probably run down your lunch time. So, let us address the next question. All these human trials, they tell you something about muscle function. They tell you about tissue regeneration. Maybe they tell you about aerobic endurance. But how do we know if it's actually reversing the process of aging? Wouldn't we practically have to wait for a hundred years to see if these technologies are actually making people live longer and younger? Well, the answer to that question takes us back to our DNA. Not within the DNA, but around the DNA. Epigenetic changes. Let's assume that every time you make a bad lifestyle choice, smoking, being exposed to toxins, anything, your body generates a junk molecule. This junk molecule is then stuck to your DNA. 
the more bad lifestyle choices you make, the more junk molecules are produced, the more junk molecules get, getting stuck to the DNA. After a point of time, a part of your DNA is completely covered in junk. What happens now? What happens if this DNA is doing something important in your body? What if it is making a protein? What if it is suppressing a tumor? Well, it does not do it anymore because it's clogged and it's not functional. The good part about this is that this can be reversed. The day you start making better lifestyle choices, these junk molecules start coming off your DNA and it can also reverse some of the epigenetic changes. Your biological age basically reverses. This and many other uh, biomarkers for aging are now being used to test the impact of aging in the technologies that we are using on it. The point to tell you about all these biotechnological innovations is to provide a fresh perspective towards age-related mortality. Some thinkers are so optimistic about these technologies that they see and that they foresee a longevity escape velocity. According to this, if we increase human life, if we manage to find a scientific advancement that can increase human lifespan by one year, in less than a year, then we are basically looking at theoretical immortality. Despite the facts and evidences that are presented, if you still think that aging is something necessary to humans and it should not be under the scrutiny of science, then you are in what Dr. Aubrey D. Gray would call pro-aging trance. Because if you think aging is necessary and natural, you must also think that cancer, diabetes, cardiac problems is natural and should not be dealt with. Well, as people far, far away from the sciences that are doing all this, we must learn to educate ourselves before we completely give in to the idea before we get completely convinced by the radical life extension. Let's just spend a little time in between, educate ourselves, doubt our sciences, critique them, because that's what helped them develop. While I keep most of my scientific doubts in my office today, let me discuss some worldly aspects that gives me jitters. If you're expecting me to talk about climate change, overpopulation, or biological diversity, I'm going to save you some time because I know you guys are aware about it. Also, if you think that I'm going to ask you general questions like what happens if these technologies fall into wrong hands? What happens if you don't understand the technology enough? Well, I can't answer that for you. Only time can. I have some genuine fears apart from this. First, as a human civilization, I don't believe we are completely at our moral zenith. Why? Because I think that as individuals, we are self-preserving. But as a civilization, we are still self-destructive. What does this mean? Every morning, we wake up, we pour a cup of coffee, we talk about health and healthcare systems. Yet, as a civilization, we have funded nuclear weapons that can blow this planet three times over. Second, what if these technologies are concentrated in power groups? Would we have a phase of time where a certain group of people are living extremely long and healthy lives while the other unfortunate group are still living the normal lifespan and health span? The third is more of a personal anxiety. Something I see about history is that with generations come paradigm shifts in thinking and revolution of practices. But if the average lifespan goes up, if the average reproductive age grows up, then the coming of generations would slow down. Would that mean slowing down of the progress of society and even the biological evolution of humans? Next in line is the artificial intelligence. A lot of our future health technology depends upon nanorobots and implants. Would, that, would this mean that the lines between humans and the machines now get blurred? The fifth question is a bit of deep one and it will, all, it will make us all uncomfortable. If we manage to decrease the number of health-associated and natural deaths, 
would we have to amend euthanasia as a civilian right of a person? Because choice drives human consciousness and choice of death is just as much important as choice of living long and healthy. The conclusion is the entire structure of communities, relationships, careers and finances is going to change and I don't think so that our institutions are ready to handle that. But putting my doubts out here is not hopelessness in its rectification. I want to bring to your attention the social problems that need to be addressed before we can accommodate extreme longevity. This brings me to the final part of my talk. Yes, it is completely foreseeable that humans might live 120 or even 150 healthy good years. But the thing is, are we prepared for it? With a show of hands, can I ask you, how many of you think that you are prepared to live 120 or 150 year old life? Few hands, sir. Well, you must know that I was not asking if it's happening or not. Because it's happening, I know it. Neither am I asking you if you will choose it or not. Because there's no one sitting by that fountain of youth is not going to decide to dip in. The only thing to ask ourselves is are we prepared for it? And if that answer is no, the only thing you can start doing today is to start preparing for it.